Welcome back to Reptiles and Research. So, what temperature should our Mexican Black King Snake tanks be? Now, I can give you a ballpark figure, or give you an opinion, or like everywhere else, or we can go into some climate data and do this properly. So, what I've done is I've taken data from Nogales, and I've taken data from Hermosillo. Now, the reason I've chosen these two places is because both of these are within the range of Mexican Black King Snakes, but also they're at the northern range, so I think that's most likely where our founder population would have been collected from to start culture of the species in the hobby. So it's very, very probable that the genetics of our captive bred animals hail from a lineage whose genetics was basically crafted around the temperatures of this sort of area. So I've got temperatures from Hermosillo and Nogales all the way back to 1985. Then what I've done is I've taken both weather stations data and I've combined them into this ultimate mega chart of temperature going back years and averaging out per month. So that we can look at that and base our care around what temperatures these animals are experiencing in the wild. So in this graph, you can see that we've got the highs and we've got the lows and we've got the average air temperature throughout each month, averaged out all the way back to 1985. Now this is all in Celsius, so you're gonna have to play around with the Fahrenheit configurations and like converting it in Google but I'm sure you'll be fine with that. What we really want to do is not give our Mexican Black King Snakes an extreme low, but not give them an extreme high either. So I really want to draw your attention to this green average line here. So as you can see in the months of November, December, January, February, this is a sort of like the brumation period for these King Snakes, where they're dormant underground or in a crevice or under a log or something like that, where they're dormant and they're going through the hibernation period. And they won't emerge until... March to April. June to September are very high in temperature. Air temperatures averaging from around sort of like 30 to 28. Now, that doesn't mean that our Mexican black king snakes are necessarily enjoying those air temperatures. We know behaviorally in captivity that they actually prefer some cooler temperatures. So when temperatures are like that during the day, you might find that Mexican black king snakes are more nocturnal during that period because they're going to move mostly through nighttime when those temperatures are cooler. So there's two ways of doing this. You can either play with your thermostat each month and you can try and build up this seasonal rise and seasonal decline to really seasonally cycle these temperatures or you can try and find a through line here to just keep a stable temperature for your Mexican buck king snake. So if you look at this graph here, you could probably say a, a through line's probably around 23 to 25. That sort of ballpark through the middle is absolutely fine. Then you can factor in your brumation periods and your tactics of brumation into that during those winter months. And if you don't know what to do for that, I've got a whole Mexican Mac King Snake guide on this channel that goes into that in depth. Now, what I really want to focus on is that this is just air temperature. This isn't basking spot, this isn't any surface temperatures, just air temperature. So the ambient air temperature in your enclosure can be around that ballpark of that 23 to 25. And it fluctuates outside of that. You can see that the temperatures they do experience in the wild far exceed both of those boundaries. So you don't have to be militant about keeping it like a constant rate. It can fluctuate. But around that ballpark, it's probably a comfortable temperature for your Mexican Black King Snake. Now, apart from air temperature, like we say here, we want to look at giving them a warm basking spot for them to bask, to warm up, should they choose. Now Mexican black king snakes aren't like a crazy basker by any means. They're not like a bearded dragon, they're not Euromastics. They are much more cryptic in the way they'll bask and they're probably basking at like a lower irradiance during crepuscular hours, early morning and afternoon. So what I would recommend is give them probably a low wattage halogen, a heat lamp over one end that's a very low wattage. That's just a gentle warmth beneath the basking light. You don't want it to be so hot that they never go near it, but also so low that they're always sat there trying to warm up. If they're doing that, then you want to up, up a little bit of the wattage and you want to see your Mexican Black King Snake just come, use it occasionally, move away, go do Mexican Black King Snake things in the rest of the enclosure and go back for a top up now and again. You don't want the snake to be sat there all day long because they're probably wanting to warm up, nor do you want to see them avoid it completely because it's a blistering hot tank. 
I'm not going to tell you any surface temperature for it to be beneath this, partly because it doesn't really have that much of a bearing upon the actual output of infrared from the heat lamp. Now let me explain. You can have two equal heat lamps and the power going into them and their output is absolute equal. It's the exact same output. But one is over a nice black rock and one is over grass. Well, the surface temperature of that black rock is going to be so much higher than the grass. But also, the lamp's never changed. So therefore, the surface temperature of the object beneath the lamp isn't really a solid measurement of the actual output of the lamp. What I will say is you, want to, you definitely want to check your surface temperatures beneath the basking spot to make sure that it's not blistering hot and unsafe for an animal to touch it. Now, surface temperatures, mind you, are very important if people are, if people are using like heat mats and it is just pure warmth to a touch. But the best thing you can do for your Mexican Black King Snake is give them a gentle heat lamp over one end and allow them to just bask in the sun. Obviously, you can turn that heat lamp off at night and allow them to have that temperature drop. Their nighttime temperatures will be considerably cooler than during the day, and that's really good for the Mexican Black King Snake's immune system, and then actually encourages them to bask in the morning as well. What I would do is place lots of little hides around the basking zone so that if the snake doesn't want to be warming up via rays and radiation it can actually just warm up via like being in a warm spot and touching warm objects via thigmotaxis and belly heat. So many people are going to be very militant about like oh it has to have like a 30 degree or 27 degree basking spot or no it's this or some people just keep like in a basement and just heat the basement to 23 degrees. Honestly what I say is give them a comfortable air temperature, give them a nice little warm spot under a heat lamp and just allow your snake to choose. I hope that helps you. If you're looking for more guides on king snakes, there's a few guides on this channel and there's a whole lot more coming. So subscribe to this channel to keep up to date with that and get the new videos given to you. And I'll see you in the next video.